the size matter. <laughs> hey, my chest up and catch that brain cause you is my name. What up beauty gang? So today I'm filming my most explosive girl talk ever. This is a video I've been wanting to film for the longest y'all. Y'all have no idea and you know I held back for so long because I was like maybe that's a little too much for YouTube like uh -uh. but at the end of the day I make my girl talks to help inspire, empower, motivate, and encourage my beauty game. So I was like I can't hold that mentality and not do a video like this and I will say this also this video was actually inspired by two other YouTubers. One my girl Lisette and the other this YouTuber I stumbled across recently her name is Haley. I'll leave both of their girl talk videos in particular that inspired me in the description box below. But I've been having this girl talk idea for a while. They just kind of gave me a little bit more motivation to go ahead and do it. So not too long ago, I asked my beauty gang on Instagram to send me some hygiene and sex questions. So this is kind of going to be like a Q&A girl talk, but a really, really juicy one. So let me just put out a disclaimer now. If the topic or discussion of hygiene, sex, any and all topics underneath the categories of either one one make you uncomfortable sis I suggest or sir I suggest you click out of this now this is not for like kitty mentalities this is for people who really want help in certain departments want advice in certain departments like this ain't no joke so if that is something your mind is not ready for exit out this video now but for everybody else who is ready I really hope you're ready. First question. Y'all came out punching, okay? Beauty Gang came out punching with these questions. Does size matter? <laughs> I think the average girl, myself included, would say absolutely. However, put yourself in this mindset. I feel as though if you are intimate with a person who is not that blessed, and it turns out to be an amazing experience and then the lights cut on and you're like oh I think your mentality towards that might be a little bit different like oh size doesn't really matter because it was still good whereas if you enter into it the lights are on you see the lack of blessedness I personally feel like that would be an instant turn off for me I think it's an instant turn off for a lot of ladies but if we're being like scientific slash thinking like correctly anatomy wise size doesn't matter but I feel like in a lot of our heads, our mental size matters. So run with that as you want. I personally think like mentally, yes, size does matter. But physically, no, size doesn't really matter all that much. If he knows how to work, what he got the correct way. Next question, pad, tampons, or diva cup? I personally am team pad all day, every day. I'm pretty much anti-tampon, especially since I'm no longer a track and field athlete. During track meets and stuff, yes, it was kind of like, girl, you wear a tight spandex shorts, you kind of have to. Or if like, I really want to go swimming or whatever, I will suck it up and do that. But for the most part, tampons are not like a every menstrual cycle type of thing for me. And the big reason is because there's so much bad stuff in tampons. There's so many toxins and chemicals. It's just not good for our body in the first place. So I personally suggest that if you're someone who's like a tampon only type of wearer, try to switch it up a little bit more. Try to work your way off of it, you know. And then in terms of Diva Cup, something don't sit right with me in terms of like from what I know of a diva cup, doesn't it like hold your menstrual cycle up there until you, t I don't I, I, I'd rather it just release correctly throughout the day and I switch my pads and you know, I guess convenience wise, that's why diva cups are preferred by some, but for me, I'm just pads, just switch your pad, you know, you usually have to pee multiple times a day, switch the pad multiple times a day, like, yeah. What to do about a UTI? Mm. I will never forget. I think actually my first and only ever UTI. And I mm, said so I wasn't gonna hold back today, huh? All right, full disclosure. I got my UTI from a sexual experience going wrong. And I had no idea what the hell happened to me when it hit. I just remember I went to the washroom to pee. Three minutes later, I had to pee again. I said, mm. That's weird. Another three minutes later, I had to pee again and this time it hurt. It hurt. And I was like, oh shit, something's wrong. And then it kept happening like that in a pattern, but then like kind of blood started coming. And I'm like, oh my God. So I had to tell my mom that I lied. Sorry, mom, you know now, but 
you know, because at that age, you know, I just, I had to lie. So I did look up like symptoms of UTIs other than how I really got it. And one of the symptoms was like a lack of water or whatever. So I just lied to my mom and I was like, mom, I haven't been drinking enough water and I think I got a UTI. So she ended up taking me to the doctor and I was prescribed medication and that's how I got rid of it. And honestly, that's the only way I know of getting rid of it. I know there's like remedies you can try. I don't know if they're effective or not. That pain for me wasn't worth trying out remedies not know if they're gonna work or not that needed to be did it so if you want to know some remedies that you can try out before having to go the route of a doctor one thing is to drink non-sugar cranberry juice or get like some cranberry tablets and drink a lot of water try to flush yourself out but realistically I think you should just go to a doctor now somebody put orgasms question mark lol I'm just gonna try to answer that the best I can based off what I think they could be meaning by that for one they're great. For two, they help relieve stress. And for three, they help with insomnia. If you want to look up some more benefits, go ahead. But I'ma just tell you, I don't know the LOL. I don't know what the LOL was for because them joints is amazing. And uh, if you ain't never experienced one, and you're young, you have a lot to look forward to. And if you're like my age, sis, you missing out. Somebody asked what are some good affordable perfumes and lotions. To me, affordable means like $10 or less, so I got some for y'all. First up are the perfumes. I got both of them from Victoria's Secret, and actually, Haley, the YouTuber I mentioned earlier, put me on to these two scents. Sis, let me tell you, these joints, they do a little something, and they're good for your pocket. The first one I got is actually this Bare Vanilla. Mm, and let me tell you too, she was actually right in her video. She said like usually she's not a vanilla girl and neither am I, but this this smells like, it's not just vanilla, it's like vanilla and melanin. Like how you would think vanilla sprayed on melanin would be. I don't know if that makes sense. Either way, this joint <sighs> smells amazing and it was super affordable. I actually got it on sale for $6, but I believe even if it wasn't on sale, it's still under $10 or if it's a little bit above $10. It's still a very affordable perfume and it smells amazing. I will say though, because it's like on the affordable side, neither one of these perfumes are something that's gonna last you all day, but you can like spray yourself throughout the day and you know, it works like that too. The other one I got is Love Spell. This is a Mm, a Victoria's Secret OG smell however they just changed like the packaging on it so it has a new look but the smell is still amazing it says like lush peach deep sandalwood that's what they say the smell is like all I know is that it smells really good mm. All right, two lotions I'll share with you guys. One is actually, y'all gonna be shook by this one. One is this Palmer's Cocoa Butter Men Body and Face Lotion. Yes, it is men's. Why, I don't know, because this joint smells like straight cocoa butter and it's super moisturizing to the skin and it is under $10. This is a smaller version of it I got from Walmart and it was like three, four dollars. Usually I get a bigger version from Target and it's still under $10. Either way, mm, mm. This is like cocoa butter and melanin. I don't know how else to describe it. It is cocoa butter on melanin. It smells amazing. The other lotion I got is this Beauty and Planet Body Butter. This was from Target. And this is my first time trying it out. And I absolutely love the way it smells. It says it's maruru, maruru, maruru butter and rose. I don't even know how to say that word. Either way. Mm. It definitely smells like rose and it's like ooh, delicious glow. It does give a little bit of glow. I wouldn't say it's as moisturizing as this, but the smell is so amazing. Super affordable. Definitely under $10. These four items, y'all, if you want to start your little smell good collection at an affordable price, I highly suggest going to get these four items in particular to start off your collection. And if you guys would like me to do a video on like my entire collection of like scents and stuff, not just affordable, well, affordable ones and the more pricier ones. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and leave this hashtag in the comment section below and I will get that video up and going for you guys. But those are my top four like affordable perfumes and lotions as of right now that I use on a daily and they smell amazing. Another question I got that I thought was really interesting. Somebody asked, is prioritizing friendship before like having sex with your partner? Does it make the sex better? Speaking from personal experience, I kind of think so. For those who don't know, me and my boyfriend have been together for almost five years. 
but even before we started dating we were genuinely like platonic best friends like we just rocked with each other we talked to each other about other guys and other girls and like we were just best friends we had a really solid friendship so I definitely think especially in the harder times of our relationship yes the friendship helped us carry on and prevail but I do also feel like a closer connection with him in terms of our intimacy and stuff like that and I think it does have a lot to do with the friendship and I do also feel like I got a lot more comfortable with him than any other person prior to him because of the friendship because we're so close and I like trusted him and I trusted him with my body and I think that just makes for better sex in general in my personal opinion but I would love to hear other people's perspective and point of view on that if you're someone who has dated your best friend and you guys have been intimate or a friend period or you haven't comment below like what if you're comfortable what your experience was with that do you feel like the sex is usually better or do you does it not matter like what do you think someone asked how did you become comfortable with your body during sex this is something I feel like a lot of us women like kind of go through like body insecurities especially when we're like showing someone all of us I will say having a partner that is very um, good at complimenting you and your body helps a lot it's not like the secret ingredient to feeling comfortable in your body because that's more of like a personal mental thing like someone's validation helps but it don't get you over that hump when it comes to feeling comfortable in your body during sex I think it's a lot of stuff outside of the bedroom that you got to work on to feel confident in the bedroom so like an example when I started working out recently and I started seeing like a line in my stomach I was like mmm and that gave me like a different level of confidence, you know. And then honestly, I feel like just remembering that God blessed you with the body that you have intentionally. And all of that was intentional. So don't question it. Don't second guess it. I know it's hard to do based off the like generation that we live in, what we see on social media. Everybody's body is snatched and hourglass shape and blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, the JJ is the JJ. If it works, it works. If it's good, it's good. But I do feel you on the, you know, lack of confidence and stuff and comfortable with your body it's definitely something you got to work at and I think a lot of it stems from confidence point blank period growing your confidence and therefore you'll be confident in not only yourself but your body and everything that comes with it someone asked is there a sexual act that is a hard no for me absolutely the two things that are absolutely no no for me one booty sex I'm, I'm good off that no judgment to anybody else it just ain't for me I, I don't I mm. No, that's a hard no for me. The second thing that is a no for me is a man's... I don't even know why I'm holding back at this point because, you know, I said I was going to be real in this video. A man's sperm, cum, whatever you want to call it, that on my face and my mouth is a hell to the mother freaking no. No judgment if that's what you do, if that's what you're okay with. For me, I'm good. Those are two hard no's for me. No booty sex and no violation of my face, mouth, or anything. Like, I'm good off of that. If somebody asks, how do you keep yourself smelling good all day? One thing is to always use wet wipes when you use the washroom. <laughs> give toilet paper away don't use it anymore that's something that will help you smell good especially after your poopies another thing is to get some reliable deodorant I use the secret aluminum free deodorant and it keeps me good all day like I tried previous aluminum free deodorants prior to secret and them joints did not last very long at all secret has been reliable last all day and then another thing is investing in some good perfume or smell good scents like I mentioned before you can either spray yourself kind of throughout the day with it or get you a perfume that kind of last all day oh also if you want to brush your teeth more than once a day or after each meal that'll probably help you smell good all day I'm sure I can think of some more stuff if you guys would actually like a dedicated video on how to smell good all day for a girl talk go ahead and thumbs this video up leave that hashtag below as well and I will get that video for you guys but those are like the top was it three or four maybe five things that I mentioned of how you can smell good all day so I'm gonna ask you to only be the guy's responsibility to bring a condom absolutely not sis we are in 2019 going on 2020 you always gotta like think of yourself first protect yourself first that's the biggest thing you should not rely solely on a guy because there are some f boys out there are gonna be like oh i don't have it but we good like i'm good and like you know what i mean you just can't trust people especially like strangers if you're that type of person who kind of like you live in your best life unapologetically that's cool but it's important to keep yourself safe so i definitely suggest always keeping condoms on you when you're sexually active especially if you're not like in a long-term relationship where like you know you and your partner are here with it always 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 do condoms and have some of your own just in case he try to be on games or whatever because people are crazy out here and it is not worth 
the consequences that can happen by not using a condom. So it is absolutely not just the guy's responsibility. I hold my beauty game accountable. You guys are responsible for your health and your body and I expect nothing less than for you to carry that mentality. So I'm gonna ask for good products to use down there on your period. One that I've mentioned a couple times on my channel which is this Dr. Bronner's Baby Unscented Soap. I've been using this for maybe like well over a year now and I just re-upped on a new big bottle as you can see. I get it from Target. It definitely lasted me well over six months if not a year. I can't remember but this is only my second re-up on it so this joint lasts a long time. In my JJ's life I feel like like transformed when this entered into my life. I always feel like really clean down there and I use it every single time I shower so definitely get you some Dr. Bronner's unscented soap. I know a lot of girls struggle with not knowing how to clean their JJ. I used to be like a water only type of girl when I found out putting like body washes and stuff that I use on my actual body down there can mess up my pH balance or just using other like feminine washes like Summer's Eve and stuff that claims to help and really that messes up your pH balance as well. This joint just unscented baby soap has really changed my JJ everyday life and then the next thing again not just for your period just everyday life these Charmin flushable wipes these joints will definitely come in handy especially when you're on your period because think about it y'all when we wipe ourselves when we're on our period it essentially just like smears it and dries it in place you know whereas this will like like a baby booty when you change a baby it gets rid of the dookie and stuff that comes out of it very fresh and clean you can't just wipe the baby with you know what that's crazy as hell I just had an epiphany why do we take so care of baby booties and, and the JJ's and stuff with wet wipes but when we get older supposedly we don't need it anymore anyway I'm team wet wipes I rarely ever use tissue anymore because I just always feel so fresh after using these so clean so fresh and so clean clean after using these they smell really good they're flushable so they won't mess up your toilet like these joints are dope obviously they are a little bit more pricier than toilet paper but I think it's worth it especially if hygiene is something that's really important to you so these two products I highly recommend not only using it on your period but also your everyday life someone asked is it normal to get dark spots down there you are not alone I feel like this is such like an insecurity and just a like worldwide thing for so many women especially black women are always here kind of like complaining about dark spots and wanting to know how to get rid of them and stuff I was definitely one of them but for me one I don't really care as much anymore and two I don't really get them anymore because I've learned better shaving techniques so if you guys want me to make an updated girl talk shaving video I can definitely do that for you guys and let you guys in on a little bit more tips and tricks to avoid dark spots but to answer this question yes it is like normal however there's ways to prevent it not going crisscross triple applesauce all over her really really helps to prevent dark spots that's my like main thing that I've done and I honestly haven't had like any ingrown hair follicles or anything like that since I decided to change my shaving routine so again if you guys want a more dedicated girl talk video on shaving an updated one because I do already have one on my channel that has done really well and helped a lot of people out I can do an updated one because I have changed a couple of things since that video go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and use this hashtag and I will bring that for you guys I said I have hella videos I'm bringing for y'all y'all see how much I love y'all y'all see someone asked what do you think of foreplay I love this question because I feel like it's not talked about enough how important foreplay is like at least for someone like me I, I, I like need that. I need to be like teased a little bit and, and to be flirted with, enticed, you know, instead of just hopping right in. Guys are usually just like, like the snap of a finger, they up ready to go. Whereas I feel like us women need to be like a little bit more romanticized and like make us feel good. Don't just hop right in there, you know? And, and usually for me personally, my experiences when it comes to sex are always so much better when like good foreplay happens before it. I also feel like way more emotionally connected to my partner we're more of like cars in the winter time you know like at least in Chicago you gotta start your car like five ten minutes before you try to leave the house in order to let it warm up that's essentially like foreplay warm us up you know get us ready and then we're good to go but I definitely think if that's something you haven't even experienced you don't know what foreplay is a couple examples of it is like you know just making out for a little bit longer not just like kiss kiss and then you hop into it make out touch on each other feed each other strawberries getting a massage from your partner prime to just like hopping into it those are different forms of foreplay you can always make it like more fun and specific to how you like things but I I'm all here for foreplay I think it's like 
really important. Really, really important to make your sex life that much better. This is something I never thought I'd ever talk about on camera. Someone asked, is it weird to masturbate? And I think it's crazy, even the fact that I was always so hesitant to talk about this on camera is because that topic is so taboo for female masturbation. Like, if a woman comes out and says it, like, they're looked at as, like, weirdos or something, like, something's wrong with us. Yet, if you think about it, I know, especially for me, when I was in, like, grade school, boys would talk about porn and masturbation, like, almost all the time. It was, like, cool and nobody judged them. But if it comes up that, like, a female does it, it's, like, you what oh my gosh it's like instant judgment and I'm like females need love too I don't understand so I definitely don't think it's weird and someone who actually helped me get over that barrier as well is Jada Pinkett Smith she had a red table talk kind of talking about her journey through like masturbation and like learning herself and I'll insert the clip here if I find it my grandmother taught me about self-pleasuring because she wanted me to know that that pleasure was from me exactly she didn't want me to fall into the hands of a man and if he gave me pleasure to think that that was him yeah. and she taught me at nine we as women have been trained that women aren't supposed to enjoy sex yeah. sex is not for women sex right. is for men pleasure yeah. is for men and honestly i think that's why so many women i know have okay. never had orgasms really yes that's a sad day. Yes, I think by your but... age, I gave myself multiples first. Uh, Multiple what? orgasms. Yeah, so, I did. I was really into it at one point. And I actually think I went through kind of an addiction too with it. Ooh, really? Yeah, I've heard Damn. that before. Yeah. And, and then one day I was just like, enough like scary. you're having five <laughs> orgasms a day yeah you get addicted because you can create so much pleasure you just constantly want it i felt like that table talk was so empowering for me because it made it more normalized it's so like abnormal to talk about it to find a girl who's willing to admit it but i'm all here for it and i think it's so dope that her like grandma engraved that in her of, like the importance of kind of like learning yourself and learning your body first before putting it in the hands of somebody else like i think it's so important because female gratification especially in terms of sexual intimacy and stuff isn't usually like top priority it's not discussed as much as it should be I feel like however we're the ones that after sex have to carry the baby and like just do so much our bodies go through so much the least that we can get out of it is gratification so I am all here for female masturbation it's nothing weird about it no you don't need to tell your business to people and be like hey I do this I don't think anybody needs to know that no way but like don't be ashamed that that's something that you're interested interested in entering to or trying out or whatever like I I'm, I'm, I'm for it I'm all for it because I do feel like it kind of ties into self-love a little bit like show yourself love you know and help you not be so like attached to a dude low-key too this is just a theory it's not proven or anything but like I feel like a lot of women sometimes their first time ever experiencing like an orgasm might be from a guy and then if the guy is an f-boy unfortunately like he got that hold on you because it's like mm, it's so good I can't let it go but if you learn to do things yourself really you don't need no nigga you just want him to be around you don't need him to be around you know you feel me i hope you get that someone asked does the first time hurt for me personally hell to the yeses and i have a whole video about the experience some tips and stuff why i regretted it and whatnot if you want to go ahead and check out that video i initially when i made that video and that was like two years ago thought that it hurt for everyone but as i read the comment section some people were like it didn't hurt at all they didn't feel it blah 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 so i think everybody has different experiences when it comes to it but for me yes it did hurt like like hell but yeah if you want more in-depth detail about my full experience you can watch that girl talk video someone asked what do you do when you're not in the mood but Bay wants sex I just think keep it real with Bay. if he respects you loves you and cares about you then he will understand and you can like either like flirt with him a little bit like I got you in the morning boo or you can just pop up surprise on him like remember what you wanted last night I'm ready now you like there's ways to make up for it where it doesn't have to be like you're not in the mood tonight and I don't know when next time you're gonna have it. You can compromise, but don't compromise yourself and your feelings and how you feel for the benefit of someone else. At the end of the day, if they can't respect something like that, you probably shouldn't be 
be with them. So I'm gonna ask for remedies for yeast infection. I've had about two or three of these in my lifetime. No, it had nothing to do with sexual experiences. One actually came from getting new panties, like colorful panties, and I didn't wash them prior to, so like the dye caused it. Another one, I forgot what the other caused. Either way, yeast infections freaking suck. And thankfully I have an old school parent, because when I was experiencing them, my mom put me on to a remedy of basically using a sanitary napkin pad, going to buy some plain yogurt, so not scented, not flavored, just some plain white yogurt, putting that on your pad, and then wearing it with your underwear. It really, really helps to soothe it. Another thing, non-sugar cranberry juice or tablets help, and drinking a lot of water. If those things don't help, I think I want to call it like Monistat. They have some like things at Walgreens or CVS that you can get, but some like natural remedies. Definitely try like the yogurt and pad type of trick first before going to CVS or Walgreens, I think, because it works for me. Someone asked, do guys mind hair down there? Dudes don't care, y'all. Like, we are the ones that care. And I feel like the guys that usually care are like little immature high school boys or just immature guys in general. For the most part though, guys do not care like that. Like I said before, if a JJ works, it works and they're happy. Like it really don't matter that much. However, this is speaking from a girl who's been in a long-term relationship. I feel like if I was like new to the scene with somebody or I wasn't in a relationship with someone, I could see why that can kind of be like a stressor a little bit of not knowing like should I, should I fix her up for him or blah, blah, blah. But for the most part, when you're dealing with like a man, they don't care. I've heard this from so many girls. I've experienced it. Like, they don't they're good now don't let it get out of control like a forest because that's disrespectful but you know it don't have to be Mr. Clean Ball. Someone asked is too much discharge a bad thing? Now this is another like really taboo topic that I thought for the longest something was wrong with me when I was younger and I got discharged. I was like I'm the only one nobody else experiences this. When you think of the Rihanna's and Beyonce's and Kim Kardashian's of the world you're like they are probably always smell good and they probably never experience discharge or their period and it's crazy because it's like female anatomy is female anatomy. It doesn't matter who you are what your bank account looks like you experience so like no discharge is not like an abnormal thing we all go through it however I will insert a picture right here I saw this on Instagram and I knew I was gonna do this girl talk video for you guys and I thought it was a really good breakdown of what to kind of like look out for in terms of your discharge if it's like milky and transparent then you're good like that's average that's normal it's cool however when it goes towards the more yellower brownish side then you might need to go see a doctor because that's not really good for you but just overall discharge experiencing it as a girl is totally common you are not alone trust me someone asked period sex question mark this is something I think is completely your preference however I don't really care for it it's just the odor the mess the I just don't I think it's worth waiting it just sucks because I know for me personally when I'm on my time of the month that's usually when my hormones are like Mm, like come here mm, you look fine today but I just I like waiting because it's just it just can get real nasty and messy and mm. let me say this though if you decide to still go with it and stuff um you could still get pregnant on your period I feel like that's a thing a lot of people don't know they think like oh they can get away with it no sis like you can still get pregnant and have a baby nine months later so just still practice safe sex even if you can't wait till you're off your period someone asked how do you get rid of ingrown scars I think one big thing cocoa butter it's been in like the black community especially for so many years cocoa butter is something that you can definitely try to use down there and it should help fade them also maybe like exfoliating and stuff could help and maybe not shaving as often giving that area kind of like time to heal could also help those are just guesses and assumptions of what could help but for the most part don't worry too much about it that's kind of a part of being a woman we're put in a lot of like catch-22 lose-lose situations for the most part we want to shave but we get ingrowns we get ingrowns and therefore we get scars like it's hard being a woman it's hard out here for us so don't don't dwell on that all too much because like I said prior if guys don't care about hair they sure as hell don't give a care about scars sis. so don't fret too much about that someone asked what birth control do I use for me personally I don't use birth control I haven't used it in actually years but I used to like when I was in college so the reason I stopped using it is because I was experiencing way too many issues and I just didn't think it was worth it so the first birth control that I tried out was actually um, the shot and after like the third session then my period was supposed to just stop until I got off the shot and I was ready to have kids 
Now, even just thinking about how bad, like, the female anatomy is to have your period every month. Like, that's supposed to be a natural thing. So, why I was okay with even having it just stop completely, I feel it's so dangerous. But on top of that, I had never experienced, like, depression before. I'm not a sad person. I'm usually very upbeat, happy-go-lucky. And after, like, the second shot, my mood would just shift really fast. I'd be real sad a lot. Like, I was just going through it. And I was like, whoa, this is not me. And when I got off the shot, I was back, like, to my regular normal. Easy. So that form of birth control was no good for me. Then I got on NuvaRing and NuvaRing was something where I was still able to have my period once a month. The ring goes up there for three weeks. You take it out during your week of your period and then insert it again after the period is over. That was cool until I started hearing news reports that women were dying from blood clots due to NuvaRing. And I was like, oh, so now you're playing with my life. And I, that wasn't enough. <sighs> It wasn't, it wasn't worth it to me. So ever since then, I was like, okay, birth control be playing. Now, that's not to knock if any of you guys are on birth control. For me personally, I just didn't feel like it was worth the risk of possibly not having kids and depression or uh, dying. So I'm just like, mm, I'd rather just practice the same sex. So I've been good for the last three or four years now. No pregnancy. Haven't been pregnant before or nothing like that. So I think it's to each its own. But I personally am good off birth control however if any of you guys are on birth control or had a bad birth control experience please be sure if you're comfortable to share it below so that us beauty game members can help each other out because I think this is a topic that a lot of people like have questions about and just don't know any better so yeah I would love to see other people's input on it but that is my reality now this was a question that caught me off guard because I was like what but I had to realize not everybody is like blessed the way I was with having a mom that was very like open and honest with me about like feminine hygiene and stuff like that on my life so somebody asked how do you properly wipe your cootie cat and the proper way to always never waver always wipe her is front to back not back to front not side to side front to back always and just picture this example and if you're someone who did not know this prior I always want you to keep this example in your head okay if you do the number one and number two so your pee pee and poo poo and you decide to, to, to play with that you want to go up and down and back and forth you're literally wiping defecation into your vajayjay now not only will that odor be insane you're also setting yourself up for possible infections and stuff that just ain't worth it. So just wipe the correct way. Always, always, always front to back. Front to back always front to back. The last question I'm going to answer today that somebody asked is, is it wrong to only be the receiver and not the giver when it comes to oral sex? Now this is an interesting one because I never want to tell somebody like what to do and th that's not what I'm saying at all in this entire video. If it's something you don't agree with or you feel like you can counter, that's cool. Like you have your opinion, I have mine. For me, I kind of view it as something like this, okay? metaphorically speaking if you buy your best friend something for their birthday I feel like eight nine times out of ten the expectation is that they would buy you something for your birthday I feel like you got to think from the other person's perspective how much it would suck if they're always adamant about like pleasuring you and making you feel good but you never like reciprocate that energy however I think it just it's another like case-by-case -case type of basis like is it a long-term relationship is this somebody that you trust or is this a, a F buddy like you gotta consider all those type of things but at the end of the day always remember this please 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 do things at your own pace your own comfortability level like even what I'm saying right now my answer is yeah I think it's kind of like wrong I think it should go both ways however don't let my opinion anybody else's opinion whoever you're dealing with pressure you into thinking you have to do something you don't have to do shit so I just want to make that very clear. It is 100% your choice if you are typically the receiver, if you want to give that to somebody. And it's not something you have to do each time they do it for you, but you know, every once in a while, you can give them a little something, something, you know, make them feel kind of good about themselves. So yeah, I really, really, really freaking hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it super helpful because it took a lot for me to make this video for y'all. I'm not even gonna lie, like this is a big step outside my comfort zone and my typical like content that I bring to this channel, but I really pride myself in making girl talks that are beneficial and helpful for you guys. And I didn't want this video to be any different. I wanted to give you guys a really raw and uncut girl talk that really answers those questions that a lot of people are looking to be answered in girl talk, but we all wanna like do surface level answers and like not 
dig deep on things since we don't want to get demonetized or you know feel uncomfortable or whatever so I don't know. I decided to step out of that comfort zone as uncomfortable as it might be, hoping and praying that it helps somebody in the future along the way. So I love my beauty game and I always want to make sure that y'all keeping it right and tight and like y'all Gucci. So yeah, if you guys want me to make like a part two and do another one of these videos, give this video a thumbs up. This isn't going to be like an every month type of thing. Absolutely not. But I don't mind like doing another one that will help benefit you guys along your womanhood journey. So yeah, please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe if you are new beauty gang is clearly lit and unfiltered and ain't scared to turn things up a notch or two so yeah until next time guys bye one time if you're confident Clap two times cause you're on me Never gave a damn about what they say Cause you handle all your business on a day by day Head high, chest up, let me catch that frame Cause beauty is your name